Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's uh, engineering uh, advanced optimization techniques uh, class session. We will have a special session today. And uh, today we will have a guest uh, as a guest speaker, lah, we can say, uh, Mr. Satyo Tri Windasmara. He is a friend from uh, now he's uh, 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 doing PhD in UNSW, uh, Canberra, Australia. Uh, since we are talking about optimization techniques, so I think it would be uh, good to start uh, by uh, understanding uh, how, how people normally do literature review on these uh, various topics of optimizations. Uh, I hope that this session will help you to have some more understanding about uh, both yeah, optimization technique, also the, the, the field of it. Okay, so uh, I think some people might joining uh, 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 later on. Uh, so, uh, but, but that's okay because I, I already record this session. So in case you have uh, questions regarding the topics that we are discussing today, uh, I think it's okay, uh, Mr. Satyo, yeah? we can ask in the middle of your presentation or you want us to wait at the end of the presentation? Ah, right, that's okay, yeah. Okay, so okay. This, this, this session will be more like informal discussions. Yeah. So if you would like to ask in the middle of the sessions, feel free about it, okay? Um, Okay, I think I have mentioned a little bit about uh, uh, Mr. Satyo. So, but for more details, uh, Mr. Satyo have prepared one slides regarding his introduction about himself. So, without further ado, I would like to give the session to Mr. Satyo. Uh, please, Mr. Satyo, you can start your uh, sharing today. Thank you very much for uh, your time. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Reddy, for the, the uh, for the time you have given to me for tonight, and appreciate for the audience. I mean, like uh, this is a Saturday night, and it's already like a uh, almost nine in Australia, and probably around six or seven in Manila, right? And yeah, I I really appreciate uh, your time to uh, enjoy this probably boring. Uh, talks uh, tonight and yeah, uh, I hope that we won't waste too much time for this and okay, let's go to the first thing that I would like to uh, discuss today. So obviously I will start with to, with my uh, introduction of, my, uh, of myself. So I'm currently a PhD student in system engineering in the UNSW Canberra, Australia. And I'm a first year student. Uh, and previously I also, uh, I did my master uh, in two universities. The first one in the Universitas Gajah Mada in Indonesia. Uh, so I am from Indonesia and also in uh, Taiwan <clears throat> for a year uh, for my MBA in industrial management. And I was a lecturer in Universitas Gajah Mada for uh, about almost two years before I moved uh, move to Australia to, to do my PhD. And I was also a research assistant in the thesis and science lab in Taiwan Tech. And I do several, uh, some research, uh, serious work in operational research and management science uh, mainly, and also in the optimization of transportation science, supply chain management, and also some uh, work and at uh, scheduling, and I also hold several skills related to it. And uh, <clears throat> one thing that probably really relevant to this talk is the the systematic literature review and also the data analysis. And below, you can see my email. And yeah, if you uh, would like to talk to me, discuss about anything, probably like a, uh, how to get a scholarship, things like uh, like that in Australia, you just uh, hit me up in the email. Yeah, that's okay. And uh, this is several research portfolio that I have uh, I have worked before. And I, speaking about the literature review, I published two recent works 
that really related uh, with the literature review or literature, literature survey, you might call it, and one in the in the topic of uh, adaptive large neighbor, neighborhood source algorithm. So it's like a, a about uh, optimization algorithm. If you probably familiar with it, with it. I mean, <clears throat> uh, you probably heard about genetic algorithm, particle swarm optimization, and things like that. And the ALNS or adaptive large neighborhood search algorithms is one of the similar framework that you can work on with it. And also I published uh, like a two or three years ago, I published another paper, uh, another literature review <clears throat> on location routing problem. Uh, so it, uh, different with the recent work. So it, this one is uh, was more into a, uh, the mathematical problem. Like, so like uh, the location routing problem is uh, generalization or uh, extension of the traveling salesman problem or vehicle routing problem that you might be more familiar with it. Okay, so because yeah, it's Saturday night, I just don't want to waste too much uh, your time. Uh, <clears throat> today, we have four things that uh, will will be talked about, will be discussed today. And I hope that you can enjoy this. And if there is something that you need to ask, just uh, mention it, uh, probably in the Q&A section, or maybe just uh, turn on your microphone, and that's OK. Uh, so the first one, uh, we would like to talk about the, uh, some short introduction uh, on the literature review and survey, literature survey, and what's that, and why should we do that, and things like that. And then uh, we will move to the main point of the, this talk. So what is the concept-centric approach? One of the uh, very recommended way to do a literate review and how to implement uh, the concept-centric approach and also the literate review, like uh, we, how we can do it step-by-step. Step. We, will, we will try to cover it uh, tonight and we will give some further education, discussion that uh, probably will uh, be so relevant when you do your literature review uh, later on. Okay, and this is several, uh, these are several key bibliographies or reference that you can check in the internet. And these are, uh, I think, a reference that will be really, really helpful for you. Uh, if you do a research in optimization, you will find that these things are really helpful for your research and for your literature review. So I, I would suggest you to check it in the internet as soon as possible. And uh, just, just to mention that this material will also be available. I will uh, share it with Dr. Eddie. And yeah, I think that's okay to have a look uh, later on. <clears throat> okay, so. We will enter to uh, we will enter the material and yeah, I hope you can enjoy it and just to check uh, if my if it's audible right now. Yes, yes, clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so we will enter the short introduction first uh, about the basics of the literature review and basic of the literature survey as well, and we will try to cover uh, is it different or is it the same or anything about it. So yeah, and let's be honest first that uh, we, all of us uh, that doing a research, whether you are a master student, whether you are a PhD student, or whether you are already a professor, things like that. And we must be honest that literature review is perhaps the most boring and tiring part of research, you know, because you have to deal with like uh, probably hundred or probably like almost thousand or thousand uh, paper or journals or conference paper and or PDF files that you have in your internet or you have in your computer. And yeah, you may have like a 1000 PDF files in your uh, computer, but maybe you just toss off 10%, 20% and yeah, so few, right? Because, and, and the, the, 
the imagination or you know uh, the imagine that you have to read those literature those pdf files one by one and and uh like 100 or 200 of them in one month two months three months or six months and that can be very daunting even for the uh very senior professor even for very very senior professor that can be a very daunting task so yeah uh but this is why uh, such kind of knowledge on the basic of uh, literature review can be very very important for you and your research work because because it's it's boring and it's tiring and it's very time consuming so we don't want to waste the time that we have and waste the energy that we have to do it wrong right to do it in the wrong way we want to make it uh, like a make sure that we do it in the right way so that's why uh i personally think that uh some kind of discussion about the literature review like this is very important for you and for your research and yeah this is very true right because you might read like us uh, you might spend several hours or probably several days several weeks to read like so many papers but it's most of them probably not you find it that like, oh it's turned turned out that it's not relevant for my research work and some of them like maybe like just help you to write like one or two or three sentences and yeah and it is what it is so yeah just a small reminder that literary review is very tiring very consuming uh, very time consuming and let's learn how to do it the right way because uh, we don't want to waste our time to do it the wrong way so yeah that's it so yeah literary review is very essential part of any research project we can uh because i i i, I remember that uh Dr. Eddie told me that the most of the audience in this class will be a master student. So it's like uh, you can imagine that uh, a literature review is very essential part of your master thesis uh, that you might uh, you might be working on right now, or maybe you will work on it later on. And it's very essential part that it's always there. Your your master thesis will always have a literature review and most of us i mean like uh, i remember when i was a bachelor or uh, when i was uh, at the start of my master uh, study i was thinking that uh, i was thinking of literature review for as uh, just yeah just another chapter in my uh, thesis or my bachelor thesis and nowadays i understand that i was very wrong on it because literature review uh, that, that chapter of literature review is a very fundamental part of your research work because when we do a research project, all we have, uh, all we need to do is like we want to moving forward, right? So uh, we want to synthesize some kind of knowledge, and because we want to moving forward, the first thing that we all we need to uh, know is of obviously. We need to understand where we are right now. So that chapter of literature review is basically, we want to know where are we right now and how we can improve or uh, make something new or probably make something better from the, the current state of your research or your research topic. And literature review is also uh, one thing that, uh, help you to ensure that you don't take the wrong way you don't do your research uh, in a wrong way or you don't uh, do it in the wrong direction and so it directs you into a to make sure that you walk in the right path and yeah that's literally view yeah you will always find it in your master thesis or bachelor thesis or maybe in the PhD 
dissertation is always there. But some of you might be uh, still uh, feel strange uh, whenever you hear about the literature survey, but maybe some of you have already tried to find it in the Google Scholar, for example. You can try to uh, type like every research topic that you have, probably one of you uh, are interested in vehicle routing problem. Maybe one of you are interested in like a scheduling, manufacturing, things like that. Every, every, uh, every single kind of research topic, they usually have a literature survey that already established in the uh, literature. And you can just try to search it in the Google Scholar. And <clears throat> what is literature survey? And what is the difference between the literature survey and the literature review? That's one thing that we will we we want to uh, answer right now <clears throat> at the first time. So, yeah, to some extent, we can say that uh, literature survey and literature review these are uh, two interchangeable terminologies. So yeah, uh, pe some people will say that uh, literature survey is a literature review, but literature uh, literature review in your the chapter in your thesis is not a literature survey. And yeah, it's very confusing, right? So yeah, sometimes it's better to let it be like, uh, yeah, okay, there's two uh, things are the same or similar. And uh, yeah, sometimes uh, it's better to think that way. But in general, uh, when we talk about literature survey, we will revert to uh, some kind of uh, more comprehensive review or more comprehensive literature review that usually will be published as a whole uh, paper <clears throat> because uh, it's very comprehensive and usually it will be uh, like uh, one gate or one the first uh, one of the first gate that will help you to understand more about your research topic. So for, for example, if one of you uh, will study about, uh, for example, like a manufacturing 4.0, for example, or like, uh, <clears throat> advanced manufacturing, for example, one of the things that will help you a lot in the first step on, of your research is to find the right survey or the very good survey on your topic. That's the very first step that I always recommend. So like because those review or those survey, they usually also cover things like uh, the basic of the research topic as well. So, okay, what's, what is the, what is, Manufacturing 4.0, so the definition, definition, and then the uh, A to Z about it for the newbie or for the uh, how to say that like a early early scholar on this topic, it will be very helpful to read that literature survey, and they also cover uh, most of the works, most of the relevant works that uh, in the in, in in several periods. So what's what what already done in your topic, and what is the research gap? What is the current trend? They usually cover it, so it's it will be really helpful for you to start from there, because you under, already understand. Okay, so people already cover this, cover this, cover this, and cover that. So I can try to improve it by doing some things that probably different or probably better, and things like that. But yeah, so for simplicity, for simplicity purpose, that let's agree that uh, when we talk about literature survey, we talk about the review that more comprehensive. But when we talk about literature review, it's about that chapter in your master thesis or your dissertation. <clears throat> and this is uh, the second point that we will talk about, and it's actually really, uh, really important. Who should do a literature survey? Who should do that more comprehensive review? So practically, uh, we know that there are two classes of people, two classes of scholars that hold the very big advantage uh, to the others. So the first one is obviously the well-established scholars or like a senior professor or maybe like a, a key opinion leader of a topic. For example, like uh, when you talk about uh, 
um, how to say that? Like, uh, yes, for example, you talk about the industry 4.0. Obviously, the, the, the one or several people or, or one people, one class of people that, that will be really, really, uh, how to, like uh, people that have the right, probably like a have a right to, to tell you about, okay, we need to do that. We need to do this on this research topic is obviously the one that already do work on this topic for like 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, because they obviously they know, they have a deep knowledge of on those particular topics because yeah, probably all of his life, they already, all of, of, all of their life, they already work on this topic. So yeah, they have, very deep knowledge on that. And yeah, well, let's call them as a well-established scholars. And the other uh, class of people, class of scholars that have a really have a really big advantage is the early career scholars like me, for, for example, or probably some of you, because most of the time uh, an early scholar like us, we are the project executor. We are the one that do the dirty jobs, right? We are the one that read the literature review. We are the one that read the literature, literature like a, we are the one that, that spend like several hours, several days, several weeks to read the literature. And we are the one who try to synthesize some knowledge from that. So, uh, Whenever we have a research project that has just completed, so we just complete like, oh, probably you have a master thesis and then you already graduate. And then when you look, up, look, look back at your master thesis, you will have a, probably the first or second chapter in your master thesis that is a complete literature review. Like you already spent several months to digging down on the like probably 100, 200, 300 uh, research work or articles. And that is that you, you just need to some, you just need to do some uh, work or some additional work to make your literature review into a, some kind of complete survey. And, but yeah, it is, uh, it's, easier said that than done, right? I mean, like, it's always, uh, it looks so easy, but in actual, just those additional work probably uh, will be really hard to do. But at the end of the day, we can say that there's two of kind of people, there's two kind of uh, scholars, the well-established one, and also the early career, career scholars, they have, uh, they have the big advantage to the other class of people <clears throat> to do a literature survey because yeah, this reasons. Okay, and then we move into the second part of our talks today at night is about the concept centric review. Uh, one thing that uh, we will try to, is uh, it, it's the main focus of our talks right now uh, and I hope that this is uh, from knowing about the concept centric review, you can understand that, oh, oh so there is uh, some, there is a way like this to do a literature review. And this is the way that you can objectively slicing the literature body and find what is the current gap, what is the current trends and things like that. Okay, so we will try to, I will try to uh, remind myself too about one particular issue in literature review that I, I find it very often when I try to, uh, when I read the work of uh, the student, when I was a lecturer in, in Indonesia, and also when I read my 
own bachelor thesis back then in Indonesia. This is one thing that we even 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 when I read uh, uh, some journal articles in a very good journal, like a art, research article in a very good journal, in a very reputable journal, and some of them are from uh, reput reputable professors too. I can see uh, some of the works that do this kind of literature review. So it's like, uh, okay, uh, A do this, and then they found that, blah, 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 blah. And then they conclude that, blah, 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 blah. And then we move to the B. B at all did this, they found that, blah, 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 blah. And C and D and something and others, other, other, and et cetera, and things like that. Uh, so this kind of uh, literature review, it's, it's, it's very common to find the review like everywhere. So from uh, the level of bachelor thesis until the level of journal articles in the very reputable journal from very reputable scholars. Some of them make a very fundamental mes mistake like this. <clears throat> so what's the problem with, with this kind of literature review? Yeah, there is a problem with this, but why? Well, but what? So often, uh, this kind of literature review, we will call it as a author-centric way. So we try to, uh, in this way, we say that, okay, that author do that, that this author do this, that authors do that. So what's the problem? Because in that way, we cannot see what is the clear pattern, what is the pattern, what is the trend that we can find there. And so we as readers, we well, we the readers, often we will left confused because we don't know. Uh, okay, uh, we already okay. We already understand that A did that, B did that, and then suddenly you did that. So what's the difference between what you done and what they done? That's something that we can we cannot uh, find in the author centric literature review like this and for me it's 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 it's, it's my personal opinion this kind of uh, literature review is a big mistake i won't say that it's like a really fatal mistake because sometimes i can say that uh, i read several works that they they did a really well thing really well researched but it's just that they didn't explain uh, What's the new thing? What's the, the better thing that they do? What's what's the better thing that they did compared to the previous works? Because I cannot see what's the previous the, uh, what's the previous works done. Because yeah, this kind of uh, ultra centric way to do the literature review. So what's the better thing to do? Yeah, obviously the concept centric review. <clears throat> so. Uh, this is one. Uh, this is to. These are two table uh, that I took from the work of Watson of what Watson and Webster. You can check in the key reference. It's a very good uh, paper that I will I will totally recommend you to check it, and I I, I believe that will be really helpful for you to do your master thesis. <clears throat> so. Uh, this is the concept that recommended by Webster, Webster and West Watson. So we do it in the concept-centric way rather than in the author-centric way. So we can see in the table one that there are two very different uh, way to do your literature review. The first one, the one that we covered pre uh, previously, the author-centric. So we can say that, okay, the author I, uh, the author I, A, they do something like this, outer B, they do something like that, and so on. But then in a concept-centric way, we try to uh, revert the position of the outer and the concept. So it's like we put our uh, main focus on the concept instead of the outer. So for example, we start with the, uh, okay, uh, when we talk about, uh, for example, uh, Industry 4.0, for example, 
Okay, so when we talk about the industrial 4.0, this guy do that, that guy do that, and things and so on. But in another concept, we can say uh, that different authors have done this one, this one, this one, and this one. So we you can see that the 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 focus is different. So it's not the we we don't say that A do this, B did this. C did that, things like that, and so on. But we say that, okay, uh, when we talk about X, these people have done this. When we talk about Y, these people have done that. So it's like very different. So in that way, we can uh, we can uh, we can see a clear pattern because in every concept, in every uh, in, the, in every concept, X, Y, Z, and so on. <clears throat> We can see uh, what is the trend, what is the gap, and so that from there we can try to find what is the meaningful topic that we will work on in your master thesis, in your dissertation, probably, or in your research work. And <clears throat> the way to do the concept centric that is really recommended, and I also uh, did uh, this concept several times is to build a concept matrix like this. So it's like, uh, we start from the articles or the authors. So, sorry, the articles, it's like article one, two, three, four, five in the, as a columns, as the, as the first column. So then in the, in the rows, and then for several concepts that we have, <clears throat> for example, okay, for the domain, I would like to, speak about the vehicle routing problem or traveling salesman problem. And then the, <clears throat> I would like to use a, a machine learning technique to solve it, for example. So it's like a, the A is, uh, it will be like a TSP and the B is a machine learning and then probably like a classification and the C is a, like a support vector machine. And then the D is uh, probably like a, a clustering, for example. So like we we try to map uh, what previous authors have done into some kind of table like this. So it it it, it looks like a very simple scenario, right? You just make a spreadsheet and then you uh, try to fill the uh, the table with your map uh, your 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 the result from uh, from your reading, but yeah, trust me, it's really time-consuming task, obviously. But uh, at the end of the day, it's better to do the literature review like this because it's also uh, help you to uh, like a probably like two, three months after you read the, that paper, that particular paper, you just need to open this metric and then you and and, and it reminds you again that oh, okay. This guy have done this, done that, and etc. That's the thing that you will not find when you do it in an author centric way. And yeah, obviously, this kind of uh, concept metrics because you have uh, like a mapping, and you, uh, for example, you you can work uh, it. Uh, we can, you can build it in uh, like uh, Microsoft Excel, and then from there you can just map it. You can do some kind of like a helicopter view from above. And then you can see that, okay, so this particular topic haven't been done by anyone. Or maybe like a, there are some gaps in this topic and I can do that very, I can try to fill that, that space in, your, my, in my own concept matrix. So that's how it works. It's very simple, right? Okay, so next we will try to discuss like, uh, so how to do it step-by-step step from the very starts when we talk about a literature review, because yes, some of you uh, probably spend your uh, Saturday night with this kind of class because probably you will face your bachelor thesis, master thesis, or probably like a PhD dissertation like me. And yeah, I hope that it can be very helpful to uh, 
discuss it from start until the finish. <clears throat> so how to do it, uh, the literature review with the concept-centric way and step-by-step. Step. Obviously, we will start it to plan the review, obviously. Yeah, uh, like uh, the, the old idiom, like the, you plan, uh, you fail to plan, you plan to fail, things like that. Yeah, and I would like to uh, remind you that there are actually numer numerous ways to perform a review or do a literature review and concept-centric is just one of the technique or method that you can do. But yeah, there are several uh, others, uh, other uh, way to do review that probably better for your, uh, for your research work. So you have to check it one by one. And so for example, uh, there is some concept, there are some concepts like uh, narrative review, meta-analysis, scoping review, meta-narrative, things like that, and etc. And I would, uh, I, I'd recommend you to check this paper uh, by Xiao and Watson. You can check in the key bibliographies uh, that they provide a very complete description of it's of the technique. So it's what, what's that, when we should do that, and what's the benefit of uh, every, every, single top, uh, every single technique they try to go over that. So it's gonna be very helpful for you. But yeah, obviously the first thing that you have to do when you plan the review, it's obviously the first one, you, you will need to decide what's the topic that you will work on, right? So for example, okay, I will try to work in the industry 4.0 or like uh, advanced manufacturing or probably like, uh, I will try to, uh, make a new uh, new method, a new machine learning method in to predict uh, some things in the, probably in manufacturing. So things like that, you need to decide that first, right? And after what you need to know, okay, when I talk about this kind of topic, how to do my literature review is, meta-analysis better or is concept-centric ways better or probably there are other ways that switch better for your projects that's the thing that you would you will need to solve at the first time and then obviously you need to search the literature or search the previous relevant works that uh have been done by probably another people or another group, another uh, companies or institutions previously. And at this point, I will, uh, no, I always uh, recommend you to start it in a very simple way. So it's like the first one, you need to select the relevant database, obviously. Uh, what is database? So you, you, some of you may have heard about the Scopus and probably like a EC web of science. Uh, and, but, but I, 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 I'm pretty sure that uh, all of you have heard about the Google Scholar, right? And yeah, Google Scholar is one of the database of research that you can use to work on your research. So for example, you will start, okay, I will start from Google Scholar first or probably like, from the Scopus first, okay, and then okay. I, I uh, let's say that you have decided to use the Scopus, okay, and then the second part that or the second step is to try to find okay, what is the relevant avenue or what is the relevant uh yeah avenue. I I I don't know what's the the uh, the better word to put it. Just like, okay, okay, I will try to only cover a journal or I will try to only cover a conference or only try cover covering books or, okay, when we talk about journal, maybe I will try to only cover the first, first 50 top journals or probably when I talk about the conference, okay, I will try to cover the top conference, only top conference because 
maybe you will find too much conference everywhere or probably you know, too much journal. And yeah, that can be a very uh, difficult for you to, because we, you, 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 may, you may end up with so many works or too many works that you will have no time to cover. So it's very, very good at the first time to start simple, to try to, uh, uh, how does that, like a divine your scope of searching literature. Because at the end of the day, we cannot answer this question. How many is too few or how many is too many? Let's say like uh, when you have like a 100 papers, 200 papers, for some of you, probably it will be too many, but some of, but, but for some other guys or, or some other professors in, in, in another country or in other countries that they have resources to do it, it's probably to view. Like, so it's better to know what is your limitation at the first time. And so you, you need to find what is the, uh, what is the database that suits better for you and what is the relevant avenues that will be relevant to you. And at some point, it also uh, very beneficial for you to also try to limit the periods of searching, for example, when you talk about the history of humankind, for example, you can try to search from like a 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, and yeah, you can you you will you will you will end up with so many literature or so many articles or so many works that you have to cover. But at some point, it it's probably better to okay, I will uh, only focus on the last 10 or 20 years, but I will add several uh, several relevant works from the previous period, for example. So yeah, after all, you need to know what is the magnitude of your project, what is the limitation of yourself to do it, and what is, yeah, what is the proper, uh, proper amount of works that you can work with, for example. Uh, so things like that have to decide at this point. And after you already search the literature, you usually will end up like with a file in, in your computer. It, we, you will have one folder that have so many PDF files, for example, or maybe like a pre several books that you have at, uh, at your home like right now. And at that point, that's the point that we need to select the literature. So because uh, it's because not every single literature that you found or every single article or document brochure, things like that, that you found, not all of them will be relevant to your work. Yeah, that's just a nature, right? That's the nature. And yeah, just be honest that when I have like, uh, for example, 3,000, 3, no, no. The last work, uh, the last literature review that I work on, I end up with like a 1,000 or 1. 1.5 thousand literature. And yeah, I just need to be honest that only 10% of them that turns out to be relevant for my project. So it's like just, I finally end up with like 100 until five, uh, 1. 500, uh, 150 or 200 works that relevant to me. So, at this point, because we don't want to waste too much time because literature review is already boring, already time consuming. Why make it too time consuming then? We will try to carefully filter those literature. How? We will uh, try, one, one, one way to do it is by introducing several exclusion and inclusion criteria. So for example, like in the previous step, we tried to only cover relevant database, relevant type of avenue, for example, okay, I will only cover uh, journals. Why? Because in my research topic, I can see that most of the relevant works, they are in the journals. 
or for example, okay, I will just cover uh, top 20 journals because it turns out uh, the others work out, uh, the works outside of those 20 journals are just a derivation of them, for example, for example. And probably you will uh, try to exclude uh, by languages, for example, okay, uh, because I cannot, I, I, I only can read the Tagalog and also English. So I will just cover those two languages, for example. Because sometimes you will find in the internet, uh, okay, this 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 uh, particular file seems to be very interesting to my work. But when you open open the uh, file, it turns out to be in probably like a language foreign language that really for uh, feels foreign for you. For example, like a Russian or oh, it's Russian or probably oh, it's it's French or it's in Belgium, for example. And yeah. It is what it is. We cannot cover them, for example. And the one that I uh, told you before, we can also try to uh, provide some inclusion uh, criteria based on the period. Like, uh, okay, the last 10 years seems to be reasonable for me. Or maybe like a thought, the last 20 years seem to be reasonable. Or maybe when you talk about uh, when your research topic is uh, one topic that not really popular, but probably very, uh, very important. You might need to digging more deep. For example, okay, I think uh, the last fifty years or one hundred years will be okay for me because there are not much work on my topic. For example, like that. And the last thing that we can, uh, we can use as a, some kind of exclusion and inclusion criteria is a, the technical aspect of your research topic. For example, when, okay, I am interested to implement a machine learning topic in my research. For example, your research in the scheduling. Okay, I want to implement a machine learning topic in scheduling. You can, but when you, try to find a machine learning topic. It's really, really large area, right? You have the supervised technique, you have the unsupervised technique like clustering, for example. Okay, uh, probably you will, I will, uh, I'm more interested in the unsupervised technique, so for example. So I will include the works in the unsupervised technique, but I will exclude the works in unsupervised, uh, sorry, in supervised technique, for example, like that. So in that way, you can try to separate the works that feels relevant to you and the one that probably not really relevant, not really relevant to your research works. That's one how one 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 way to do uh, the selection or careful selection of literature. And the last thing that uh, I need to mention at this point is the, the terms of forward search and backward search. So after we do the, uh, okay, we already established the in exclusion criteria, inclusion criteria. And for example, okay, uh, at, at the first step, when I did, uh, when, we, you, when you do the uh, search, literature search, you end up with like uh, 1,000 literature, and then you do your selection, and then you, okay, you read one by one of them, probably like in the abstract, you read the abstract. Okay, this seems not uh, relevant to you. Okay, this seems relevant to me. Okay, this seems not relevant. And after you finish that step, okay, you will end up like uh, 100, uh, probably like 100, uh, literature, for example. And then you can do this kind of search. The, so the first is the forward search. So you try to assess the words that cite this, this 100, you already have 100 uh, literature, right? And some of them, they are cited by another works, more recent works usually. So that's why it calls as a forward 
search. One of the tools that you can use is the uh, Google Scholar, because you can when, when you when you type uh, a title of uh, literature, some kind of paper, for example, for example, genetic algorithm in blah 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 blah, you will find uh, a pattern of cite by for example, 10, 20, 30, and you can try to assess, okay, in those works that cite these relevant works, are they are there any works that relevant to me? For example, like that. And the the other things is the backward search. So in the in this 100 papers that you now have and you feel relevant to you. They are, they are citing uh, some works, right? The previous work. You can try to assess them, okay? You look at their, their titles and then you try to type it and then you try to assess the abstract. Okay, oh, it seems relevant to me. Or probably like, oh, no, no, no. It's just, just uh, similar works probably. And yeah, things like that. So you can see the pattern, right? So the first one, you search the literature and then you, you try to establish the, some kind of exclusion and inclusion criteria. You read it one by one and we uh, probably like a skim that. Okay, and then you decide, okay, you go out, you go in, you go out, you go in. After finish, you try to moving forward and then you try you to move in backward. That's how you can find the now you have a one database of your uh, one database of literature that feels relevant to your research project. Okay, and the next step is obviously the uh, try to develop a concept metric. And in optimization, when we talk about the optimization, um, I think it's quite. Uh, it's pretty small. So the, 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 the left side, the left graphic is pretty small, but uh, we, we just need to, uh, it's just an example. So uh, when we talk about how to do a concept metric in optimization, it's pretty helpful for us to use some kind of taxonomy. So yeah, you know taxonomy like a, uh, biology, yeah, like in biology, you can say like uh, the kingdom uh, and species, things like that. It's uh, like it's basically taxonomy, like like a hierarchy. And uh, you might remember uh, in semestry we have the like a uh, periodic table that's actually a taxonomy of semestry, right? And so the, this kind of taxonomy will help us to systematically develop. The concept metric, and the one one thing why it's uh, I feel that it's very important uh, in optimization is because it's very flexible to use. Because for example, in this example, I have two example here. The first one in the left side is the taxonomy of VRP, VR collecting problem, the very classic problem that you might be familiar with uh, from a very similar paper of uh, Axio Glue in 2009. So you can see here that they use the taxonomy to develop a concept matrix at a problem, at a domain, or at, at, at an optimization problem, like a mathematical problem like VRP. So they, they try to build the concept uh, one by one from like, a, okay, what kind of type of study and then uh, what if uh, they try to like uh, slicing the VRP into several classes, for example, like, okay, based on the scenario, based on the physical characteristics, based on uh, like, how, like how many vehicles are uh, used, uh, what is the objective function, uh, things like that. So based on the characteristic that are, are like, uh, features based on the features that the problem have they try to uh they try to make a concept concept metric based on that 
On the other hand, this is uh, the right in the right side. This is a taxonomy of ALNS that I uh, developed uh, with my co-authors in my previous uh, my recent papers. So you can see that at at one hand you can see that the taxonomical taxonomical analysis like this can be uh, can be implemented at a problem at the problem side, but uh, on the other hand, you can also say that this kind of taxonomical analysis can also be used to analyze or to review uh, some kind of method. So for example, like if you uh, talk about machine learning, for example, you will have the unsupervised and then the right side, you will have the supervised and the un unsupervised, you will have a clustering and maybe like another kind of method. And in the supervised, you will have like classification and then SVM, things like that, and et cetera. Et cetera. So you can see that it's very, very uh, flexible. So, okay, we already have the taxonomy. So what's that? Well, I mean, like what's then? So you need to find the current trends or like the trends that you can uh, find it at the, uh, at at that topic, right? And a very simple way of do it is to just uh, develop a matrix. Oh no, no uh, develop a spreadsheet using a Microsoft Excel or maybe like a uh, yeah another another uh, other softwares that probably available for free. And you can try to make a just a very simple table like this. And this is the, the, the example of my previous work that we built some kind of metrics like this using an Excel. And then we try to fill it one by one. Okay, this guy do this, this guy do that, and, and et cetera. So, so from there, we can find, okay, what is the current trends? Uh, so for example, we can try to have a look at what's the concepts that has the largest number so so in the col what which column has the largest number of works for example okay so for example uh, when we talk about uh, supervised machine learning for example oh well, turns out uh, most of the work are in classification so that's the trend oh okay so the trend is that uh, most of the work right now, they focus on the classification, for example. Or maybe you can try to have a look at the concepts that has the largest increase increment in recent period, or maybe like a, some concept that has the largest decrease in la a recent period. Oh, it turns out uh, the trend, the recent trend is that people start to move out from Genetic algorithm, for example, for example, just, one, just, one, just an example. Or maybe like, uh, oh, it turns out people uh, already uh, feel that clustering is not that effective anymore, for example. As you can see, uh, using this kind of uh, simple method, simple technique, you can try to have a look what kind of patterns that you can find. And after that, obviously, you will try to find the relevant research gaps in, 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 in master thesis, for example, or in PhD dissertation. These gaps will be very crucial to your work because that's basically one way to say that my works is meaningful because it's yeah it, there is a gap and I try to fill that. So yeah, basically, the uh, finding the relevant research gaps for your research work is the key takeaway from your literature review or your literature survey. And yeah, it's a very crucial part because I, uh, like I mentioned before, I tried uh, I, I I have read several reviews or several works, oh no, it's several surveys. I read several surveys in 
uh, various topics like um, optimization and other topics. And there are several surveys that I read that they have a very good uh, <clears throat> from start from the introduction and then uh, until the uh, presentation of the findings. It's a really good, it's a very good review. But at the last point, when they have to uh, present their research gaps, okay, so what's the gaps that you found there? There are several uh, review that I have to say it. They they are fail, they they are failed to 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 present it clearly. So for example, I I I have read one uh, one paper. I read one paper that okay they 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 did a very good review until the uh, when they talk about okay the, there is a current trend there there are several trends in this topic like this 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 and that okay I I I I, I totally understand that but at the at the at the end of the uh, of the article at the end of their their project are at, at the end of their work when they have to talk about the the research gaps that that uh, meaningful for future research or future works it's suddenly like disconnecting it's like they present some gaps that you cannot find in in their review so it's like where uh, what it's like uh, me as, as as the reader i was like why 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 did you propose to do it because you you did not you did not cover it in your review and it suddenly pop out so there are several kind of disconnection that uh, you can find in uh, so many literate review um, literature survey for example you can do a literate review for your master thesis for example or your for your phd dissertation okay you talk about a okay you, you do it a great way in do it do it in a very good way but at the end of your literal review, when you have to say, okay, based on my literal review, I'm interested to do this A, B, and C, for example. But it's gonna be very disappointing for the readers when the reader cannot find why you do A, B, and C when you talk about c d and e more in your review so that kind of disconnection is one of the crucial part that you have to understand on or you have to prevent in your literature review or literature survey so in general where to look at when we want when we want to uh, find the relevant research gaps where to look at so the first one is obviously we want to look have a look again at the current trends. So back then, the current trends. So we want to find, okay, now I know that the trends in machine learning is to do classification with clustering, for example, for example. Okay, okay, now so the current trend is to do, uh, to solve a scheduling problem with uh, machine learning techniques, for example, this is the current trends. So we can dig deep more at that point, okay? Because everyone wants to do a machine learning nowadays to mass scheduling problem. So what's the interesting to do on it? What's how to uh, how to extend that? How to to uh, how to improve that? For example. So uh, that's one that's that's one way to uh, to have a look at. Another way, we can try to put the focus on several concepts, for example, like okay, oh well, turns out uh, several concepts like uh, in machine learning, like maybe like super support vector machines, they are rarely discussed. So uh, when we talk about the concepts with few or even non-existent discussion, so when if we pick into this kind of metrics, 
we talk about the columns that have no previous work, for example. That can be a very good way, uh, uh, or no, no, that can be a very good research gap. I can, I, I say that that can be, right? We will cover it after what, uh, why, uh, in, se in, in, in several on, no, no it, in some cases, in some cases, uh, there are cases when the concept with few or non-existent discussion probably is not worded for uh, research gaps. And last, uh, last thing to have a look is, uh, no, no, it's not the last thing, but one another thing that we can have a look is the, we can try to find the current practical issues that related to our work, for example, uh okay when when we talk about the machine learning uh we can okay everyone have done a to z in machine learning but it turns out i can see that and there is a practical issues that machine learning is difficult to uh implement in a, for example, it might, maybe in, in, in uh, maybe, okay, I can say that uh, based on my interview with uh, some managers in, in companies, in, in industrial companies, I found that uh, they, they, they feel that machine learning is very hard to use in daily basis, for example. Okay, so maybe, maybe one, the risk, one of the reasons get that worth to have a look is to develop a tools that make machine learning usable for industrial uh, daily use, for example. So that's, uh, that's several examples of how you can try to find the research gap that relevant and can be a very good for your uh, literature review to, in, to close your literature review. Okay. And Several discussion uh, on some common issues in literature review and survey that uh, based on my, most of them are based on my experience as well. But probably if there is uh, some kind of uh, question before we move into the next step. Okay, very interesting, Mr. Setio. Yeah, actually there is several people already joining, uh, not only from uh, my class today, but uh, I think uh, so far what you have uh, given uh, the information to us is very, very useful, especially at the beginning when you uh, start from the concept, the differences between the review and how uh, what's different with the survey paper, and then how important the literature review is and how to conduct a survey paper later on and the tips and tricks and so on. Uh, I have several questions, but I may want to give the opportunity to the 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 other uh, attendees today. Is there anyone want to ask questions? Perhaps Memo Sang, maybe or oh, Pak Ivan also already joined. Pak Ivan, hello. Okay. Yeah. If not, let me let me st start first uh, with my question. Uh, if 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 it is okay, Mister Setio. Yeah, that's uh, right. okay. So uh, yeah, I am quite um pretty much agree that when you say that uh it's a good start when you want to uh, do some topics uh on your research, you can start by reading a survey paper about it. Uh, I'm I'm one of the persons that uh, often use that approach because I can found the foundations and then I can easily find the research gaps on that particular topics. Uh, so I, I normally search for a survey paper before I conduct my research on some uh, particular uh, research topics that I want, I'm going to do. But sometimes I found several terminology that perhaps uh, you may or may not mention earlier uh, the, the most often one about survey paper that being used were using terminology of taxonomic literature review, 
and then systematic literature review. Uh, do, do you have any any information? What would be the difference between these two? And then, uh, yeah, in terms of those, is that is that a significant difference? And then, is there anything in particular we need to concern about about these two? on when we are doing some if you want to do a survey paper yeah that would be my okay. question yeah. okay that's a very interesting question so yeah yeah i i know that uh, there are several uh recent works or no, no not not recent but uh it's it's been a long time to uh, to to see that several surveys they present it as a systematic literature review but yeah, we can also see that several uh, works also present themselves as a taxonomical review. But yeah, it's it's as far as I know, the taxonomical review, they usually, the, the, the key of the taxonomical review is because they use a taxonomy, because they develop some kind of taxonomy, like previously, for example, like this, because because there, there, there are, there are, uh, there, are uh, there is a, taxonomy that they use, they develop it, or maybe they, they use the previous taxonomy from previous uh, works. So it's like, uh, but but in systematic literature review, uh, as far as I know, it 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 put the, the, the word systematic, it put focus on, it put the uh, focus, it focus more on their way to conduct the literature review step by step so it's like the whole thing that we uh we cover in this uh, topic from uh, we try to find the uh find the from how do we define the topic from how do we search the literature review uh, sorry to to how do uh, we search the literature to how do we uh, how we select the literature? Uh, to how do we we build a database of literature until how to do the literature review? Because that's a systematic way, right? so step by step, one by one until the finish. Uh, as far as I know, that's uh, that's the thing that make it systematic. So uh, we can say that most of the time a taxonomical review. It's a systematic review because usually when we we build a taxonomy, obviously we need to do it one by uh, step by step. But uh, systematic literature review, most of the time, it's not a taxonomic review because there are some other ways to do it, not using without using a taxonomy. Okay, just to be clear, uh, maybe a, a follow up questions like uh, today we discuss about a concept centric review and uh, earlier you mentioned that uh, we can use the taxonomy for your concept something like that. Uh, so can we mention that is that okay or uh, I, I'm not sure if my understanding is correct or not. If we do conceptual concept centric review, we can also call it a taxonomic uh, review. Is that is that correct? Like that or or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To some extent, that's correct. Yeah, to some extent, that's correct. Yeah, because we we when we build the concept metrics, it's basically a taxonomy. It's just a matter of how we present it. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I I I understand that some of the uh, some of the, uh, some persons, some scholars probably not agree with that. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, I can, I think uh, very much answer my question. Uh, what about the other audience? Is there any question you would like to ask? Ibu Oki, perhaps. Do you want to ask anything? Okay. If not, uh, we can try to move on okay. to the okay. last slide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please, uh, Mr. Satyo. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, I think there are several. Uh, after we finish the discussion on the step by step of literature review, how, how to how to perform a literature review or literature survey, we we I would like to cover several uh, discussions that uh, feels very relevant. So the first one is that. 
uh, it's a comprehensive review. So it's well, or a survey. When we talk about survey, we usually talk about the review of 50, 100, 150, or 200 uh, review, 200 articles that reviewed in your uh, literature review. So it's a survey really needed for my topic. That's one question that uh, usually pop up. So that that also yeah obviously the answer is depends on your it depends on your uh, topic uh, how popular is it or how important is your topic is it for example uh, if your topic is popular let's say in the last ten years there are 200, 200, 500 uh, works that have done on your topic. So pro when you see that, okay, in the last 10 years, in the last five years, there is no one that have done a review on it. So yeah, probably a survey is needed, right? Probably urgently needed, probably yeah, needed because this kind of survey will map or uh, will help you to map uh, the what happens on your research topic. So imagine, for example, uh, when we talk about machine learning, yeah, again, machine learning game because it's easier to understand. Uh, when we talk about the machine learning, it's it's a very broad topic and it's a very large topic, right? I mean, like. Uh, if you search machine learning techniques on Google scholars in the last 10 years, for example, or in the last fifth year, five years, you will end up with so many literatures. And imagine if you are a new uh, new scholar on machine learning. Okay, you enter at, at uh, 2022, and then you will start your work on it. And then when you click machine learning technique in Google Scholar, and you end up with, whoa, it's there are too many and it's pretty hard for you right to to answer this question this one question where should i start with what what top uh, what technique that i should use it's very hard to do it like and if you need uh, for example if 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 at that topic in the last 20 years for example there if there is no one that do a literature survey on machine learning topic everyone will yeah it, it's gonna be a mess right because you need to start again from early 2000 to find okay the first technique is blah 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 blah, blah. and yeah so it's gonna be really hard for you to start work in that topic so so obviously uh if we, if we back again is a survey really needed for my topic yeah, the, the, the answer is depends on your how popular your topic is. And can we find the last surveys in recent years, for example? Because probably, okay, there is the, oh, there was a last survey in 2020, for example. No, no, no. For example, this is a really good example. Okay, for example, you will start your master thesis at 2022 okay and you you found that okay the last survey on this topic is in 2018 so it's like a just very recent four years three years four years so probably a review is not needed for this topic but turns out your topic is about a pandemic for example you will see that in okay the last one is the 2018 but for from 2019 until 2022, there are tons of work have done in terms of in the topic of pandemic. So you can see that the graph becomes like increasing a lot. So okay, maybe in the the other topic, okay, the last three years, uh, okay, the last survey is four years ago, five years ago, okay, so it's not needed. But in another topic like that, it's happening right now, like pandemic like COVID-19, like uh, maybe like a virology, it's beca it becomes a very different uh, case, right? So you need to, uh, before you can answer this, you can, you need to understand, okay, 
uh, is my topic popular? Is this topic is important? And what's happening in uh, recently in my topic? That's one thing that you need to answer first. Second one, second thing that I would like to mention is about the imposter syndrome. I mean, uh, it's uh, if uh, you uh, follow this discussion from the very start, uh, you will remember that I talk about who should do a literature review. So the first one is the well-established scholar because they, yeah, they obviously know a thing or two. No, no, they know almost everything about the topic, and then they know okay, what should we do? And when they say what should we do, usually people will listen to that, right? But on the other spectrum, on the other extreme of the spectrum, one of the people, one of the classes of scholars that have a big advantage to do a literature review is the early career scholars, because most of the time they are the one that do the dirty jobs, right? It, yeah, some of... Uh, like a senior professor probably like uh, will say that no 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 but, but yeah it is what it is people just uh it's it's it's, it's a secret it's, it's a public secret like um, that the early career scholar, scholars usually do the dirty jobs uh, so but when when a scholar early career scholar uh try to uh make a literature review or literature survey uh usually you, they, they have to deal with the uh, imposters with some kind of imposter syndrome that am I, do I have a right to tell another people that probably more senior than me uh, on, okay, we should do this, we should do that. Do I have a right for that? So one, uh, some kind of that questions uh, is always there. And I, 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 I felt that too at the first time when I did my first literature survey. Uh, even when I I was uh, closely uh, supervised by my uh, supervisor in my during my uh, previous study, even even with their 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 close supervising, uh, I I it, it's 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 a still real real thing that uh, I felt like. Okay, do I really have a right to do that? But yeah, it, but at the end of the day, like it is what it is. I mean, uh, critics, people, uh, critics from uh, will come from everywhere. But yeah, that's very okay. Like yeah, I, I, I know that, uh, and I, I, I found in several, uh, several posts in LinkedIn, like, uh, like people that more senior than me, the uh, they do some kind of cat keeping uh like uh, okay the one that should do a literate review is just the one that is already established like already senior but how senior is senior how established is established is also a debat debatable right and yeah so when we we found that kind of uh very debatable things like that yeah is it's actually yeah everyone has the right to that to to do that and yeah, that's all very okay, actually. So yeah, that's one thing that if you, as probably in, uh, the student in the MAPWA at that uh, do their master research or probably like a PhD research, and then they have the idea to, okay, I think I can publish this kind of, uh, I can publish this, uh, my review, my review and my thesis into a, uh, literature survey, I think, because it's com very comprehensive. But yeah, when you try to reshape your literature review into you, into a survey paper, that's one thing that you have to deal with the imposter syndrome. Because yeah, that's one thing that you have to answer. And this is also related. the the next The next point is also related to the imposter syndrome. Uh, one of the problem when we do, it's not about the literature survey, but uh, in it's in a literature review in general, is that sometimes we forgot that uh, we, we, we do our literature review without being critical. So it's like a lack of attack. So sometimes we forgot that uh, in literature review, we have the right to attack another, uh, another one. We don't attack, we don't attack the people, right? We attack the idea. 
So uh, maybe you already have the concept metric, uh, concept centric uh, literature review, but probably you don't do anything. We you don't do anything any critical things on it. For example, okay, concept A, blah 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 blah. Concept B, blah blah blah. Concept C, blah blah blah. Nobody do concept D, so I do concept D. For example, like that. But that's not how it goes, right? That's how. That's not how it should be done, because sometimes you need to digging deep more. Okay, I can see that concept C is done by A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but I can say that F and G do it wrong because they should do it blah, 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 blah. And I can see that C, this, this concept C should be done much better because blah, 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 for example, like that. So you, in literature review, in any form of literature review, you have the right to attack uh, the previous works. Yeah, sometimes that's also related to the impulsor syndrome because sometimes we will feel that when we uh, we work on your or on, on our resource, even uh, not not only in survey, not only in review, but every other works, we usually feel that uh, we usually feel like, what if I'm getting a uh, what, what 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 if I'm getting criticized because of my my work because of my project, but yeah, at the end of the day, people just critics your idea. They they did, yeah, some some uh, some bad guy do that. But uh, if uh, if ev every if everything goes well, people just only criticize your idea, not yourself, right? So yeah, so at the end, of, uh, so. This is one thing that we always need to remind that in literature review we have the right to be critical. We need to we need to be critical. We need to attack. Some sometimes we need to attack. Okay, it's wrong, so we need to do it much better. For example, that that becomes a research gap, right? And the last thing that I think need to discuss is. Related to the previous uh, discussion on the research gap, when we found our research gap, for example, okay, in machine learning, supervised machine learning, it turns out I found that super vector machines is not popular. For example, that's the trend. And okay, is it a gap? Do we need more works in super vector machines? For example. Okay, it might be if if it, so. It at this time we need to be critical. Maybe you are you are uh, you are the one who works uh, in support vector machines and you see that it's not popular. And, but you want to say that, hey, people, you need to work more with support vector machines because I know this method is really pop is really effective. For example, and then you elaborate your 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 idea that support vector machine is very good it's blah blah blah, blah. it's blah, blah 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 like a, yeah you, you try to sell it for example yeah it probably relevant it's probably a very relevant research gap but there are several cases when okay i found that this concept that concept so this concept a this concept b that concept c nobody talks about it Nobody talks about those topics anymore, or maybe like in the last ten years, nobody talks about that. But you need to ask yourself why are they uh, don't uh, are they not talk about talk being not being talked about because they are too complex, for example, or probably it it's just because they are not relevant. It's not effective, for example. Because it's not effective, people left them, left them. That's one thing that you need to uh, uh, answer. So when we found that several concepts, several uh, column is not discussed, yeah, probably because it is what it is. 
because it's not effective, for example. So yeah, that's several things that you need to, and then I think it needs to be uh, addressed when you work in your literature review or literature survey. Okay, I can see one uh, particular, uh, no, I can see two questions. Yeah, uh, there, there is two questions uh, from Bu Oki and Pak Ivan, Pak Setio. Yeah. Would okay. you like to answer that one first or? Yep, okay, uh, okay. Uh, I think I will try to answer that one by one. Okay, I, I can help okay. you to reread the questions. Okay, Ivan. okay. Thank okay, you first much. from Bu Oki. Thank you, Pak Wira, for the opportunity. I want to ask to Mr. Setio how to create a concept matrix on a particular topics that you choose. And then from your experience, how long does it take to create a paper on a, uh, perhaps a survey papers? I think there is two questions from Ibu Oki. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Reddy. I will try to uh, answer this question. The first one, how to create a concept matrix on a particular topic. Uh, okay, well, we will, try to look back at this these two slides so so the first one uh, maybe we, we, we will repeat this point uh, one of the one of the most effective ways to build the concept metric is obviously using a, a taxonomy so we uh, we can try to uh, how to say that like uh, so we can try to div divide your, the research topic into like a several branches and then like a goes deep, deep, deep and digging deep again and again. So we can try to find a pattern, how we can, like a new, like a making a decision tree, right? So how we can uh, try to uh, classify the research, the works in, your, in, in our research topic into several classes, but not being too, to uh, specific, but not also, but being specific enough. So one of the way to do it is using a taxonomy like this. In the left side, we can see uh, the example of taxonomy of PRP. So, so, so it's very flexible because you can use for the kind of problem or maybe like a kind of domain. And on the other side, in the, left, in the right side, you can see also the example of a taxonomy for uh, method uh, for some kind of method like GA for or PSO or maybe like a LNS for example like this. So after that, yeah, we can try to use a yeah, very simple way using spreadsheet, nothing sophisticated. It's already very effective to make uh, to help you and to help the readers to grab uh, to grasp the the current state of the art of the research topic. So this is one example of how we use a simple, very simple spreadsheet and develop a taxonomy. Uh, from our developed taxonomy, we can try to build it into a simple spreadsheet like this. It's very easy to use. I'm like we're using, using Microsoft Excel or another uh, spreadsheet uh, software that's uh, very simple to use. And from my several experience, uh, to create one paper of the review, yeah, it's obviously uh, very various, like, I mean, like a various experience. I mean, uh, it's very obvious that uh, the longest period to work in on the later reviews, obviously the uh, how uh, we, we to read the paper. I mean, like because usually we end up like uh, with one, two hundred, one hundred or three hundred papers, and then we need to read that one by one by one, and yeah, that's very time consuming. And but uh, yeah, it depends on how many people works on the project as well. For example, uh. When I did my first literature review, it's, it's, it was actually a, a part of my master thesis back then. So obviously, yeah, I can say that 
it took me for more than a year to finish that because yeah practically i did my master thesis for a year but uh in my recent work because i work with several co-authors and uh like well we work in at, uh, in a team of five so it's it because it was much easier and much much faster to finish that like uh six months and we we can finish the the reading task in almost a six months and then we can continue to uh develop the analysis and develop the uh the manuscript afterwards so it's like yeah generally in less than a year i think that's uh probably probably normal in uh to some extent yeah i think okay that's okay that's all right. maybe yeah that. great great thank you for the answers uh mr satyo uh let me check yeah i think bu okay also said uh thank you for the answers okay la, let's move on to the next question from paifan hello pa satyo my name is ifan i'm from ITS surabaya if we search data using the same keywords with multiple different database, such as uh, search using Scopus and then search using Web of Science, then uh, we may have a multiple uh, papers. How, how do you combine the results? Uh, okay, maybe this one related to the tools and then the, the yeah, more like uh, how, uh, how to do uh, the, the pre-processing of the, the, yeah. the data, yes. Yep, uh, because we, 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 we usually will, uh, we will try to cover more than one uh, database, for example, like Scopus, uh, Web of Science, or maybe like uh, Google Scholar. Well, yeah, that's very correct that we usually end up with several duplicating, uh, uh, duplicating uh, data, for example, uh, in Scopus, uh, because some of the, some of journal, for example, they, they are covered by not only by one database. So one of the uh, one of the I remember one software named Chapref. It's a it's a free 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 to use uh, free to use software that uh, after you 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 after you download the after you get the database uh, file from for, for example from Scopus or from Web of Science, you can. Uh, Try to open the the, the pip text of it using a chapref, and they can uh, read the metadata of the of every file, and then from there you can also try to uh, delete the duplication of data from there. Yeah, what, that's one thing that uh, uh, obviously we need to work at first. So we need to when when we we try to uh, when we in the uh, in the phase of searching literature in the sorry like the very first very first step of our literature review we will end up with so many files ton a ton of database files and then the very first thing that we have to do afterward is obviously to delete the duplicate duplication data because there is no need for that right so yeah one of the way of it yeah uh, that i can share with is using a job ref and actually it's uh it's also very i'm not quite sure if it's uh, a lot to uh, say this but it's very easy to use a mendeley too but uh i believe their new version of like a the the very new version uh they don't allow that anymore but i remember i i'm not quite sure about it but i'm pretty sure the the desktop version of mendeley you can uh, you can throw the database file into their uh, into their their folder, and then like a, you throw several of them, and then just need to click one or two button, and then you can uh, delete the duplication of data from there. In, yeah, very much uh, answer the question from Paifan and. Uh, you have mentioned several tools. I try to find the links, uh, and then I already put it on the chat uh, sessions. Uh, 
Is there any other tools? <laughs> This make me more curious. Is there any other tools that help you to do the survey literature that we that significantly help you on your works, uh, Mister Sapi? Uh, okay, let me let me let me remember it. Uh, there is one one tools from when when one 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 free tools from. I think from Oxford or Cambridge. I I I I I'm I'm a bit forgot of it. Uh, the name is published in Paris Seven. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a very 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 beautiful tool actually. Okay, published in Paris. Okay, okay. And what what is it for? Uh it's actually like a uh, you can you can search uh a literature from uh several databases from it, ah, like in in one tools. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's for the searching phase of the. Yep, 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 yep. Great, great. Okay, is there any other question from the audience? Okay, if no, then I think, yeah, we we have. Uh, so so you you already at the end of your uh, presentation, mm, right? Yep, yep. Oh wait, wait. another question from Paifan. Thank you. Thanks, Pasetio. I have a question. Have you ever used FOSS viewer or bibliometric visualizations? Ah, oh, unfortunately not. Yeah, but uh, I remember one of my mate. Uh, he uh, he mentioned about the FOSS viewer, and uh, it helps to like a uh, build build building the connection of uh, several several paperwork, right and. And I also uh, I read a similar a work uh, similar work on it. Uh, it's the name is like a research rabbit, I think. Mm. Research, research rabbit. It's, it's almost similar with the uh, fast viewer, but it's more like uh, uh, I'm not quite sure if it can it can really help to build a like literature review because it's just for finding a relevant work based on the work that we have on the database. Okay, very good, very good. great. Any other questions, everyone? Okay, if not, let's give us uh, give a big applause to Mr. Satyo for his sharing today. Thank you very much, Mr. Satyo. Uh, actually, we have a certificate for you. Uh, this is from uh, Mapua University. But since we are doing it online, so I would like to ask permission to share it like this. I'm sorry, Mr. Satyo, we cannot send it directly to yeah. the Australia. <laughs> but perhaps if we meet again in Indonesia or if I have chance to visit you there, uh, yeah, I will try to give you at least something <laughs> To, to say our regards for your sharing yeah, today. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Reddy, for your uh, invitation and as well as the Mapu University and also for the all the audience. I mean, like, yeah, it's it's Saturday night, and yeah, uh, if I can choose, I might choose to do another thing as well. <laughs> no, no, your your talk today is very very useful. I think several people, several audience today that. I think it, it, uh, yeah, they, they were also interesting on doing the survey paper. If it is okay, can we like contact you again if we need uh, to ask question or if if we want to collaborate with you doing some research, uh, would you be okay with this? Yeah, it is very okay. I, I already put my email on the first slide of this uh, slideshow. And yeah, I think I will send uh, the, this material also. Uh, so we can be share okay. to the audience as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Satyo, for your uh, time today for sharing. So uh, by this, I, I would like to conclude that uh, our session for today is already end. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, attending today. Uh, see you again in other opportunity. Okay. Good evening. Bye-bye, everyone. Good evening. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. Permission to end weekend. the session. Bye-bye. Yeah. Have a good weekend.